Hello. In this part, I would like to demonstrate uh, binary semaphores used uh, with FreeRTOS uh, system and uh, CMC's OS layer in version 2. We'll start uh, from stm 32 IDE. Uh, you can use as well Cubemix. So I will start a new project uh, from file new stm 32 project. Uh, my target micro is stm 32 l 476 rg which is located on our board Nucleo L476RG. So I would put part of the name here and uh, there is my selection. Uh, name of my project would be 5 underscore is SEM underscore bin and I press finish. With this exercise, we would need uh, two tasks and we will use one external interrupt, which will use the blue button, which is connected to pin PC13. So first thing we need to do is to configure the PC13 as external interrupt. External interrupt. We can put a label on this pin as well. Click on the right button on mouse and we can put here, for example, blue button. An assignment label to the pin is done with a main.h file with the generated code. Next step is a selection of debug interface. So I go to system core and sys group. Within sys group, I'm selecting uh, within debug uh, trace asynchronous SW just to have a complete SWD, uh, those two lines, and uh, single wire output, which is used for the trace, single wire trace. Then within this same group, uh, I will change uh, time base source from sysdic into, for example, timer 6, just to do not have any conflicts between HAL library, which is using the time base, then by default it is Cystic, and the FreeRTOS, which is using Cystic as well. So we will keep Cystic for FreeRTOS, and as a time base for the HAL library, we will use timer 6. So this is a second selection. The third selection is um, FreeRTOS configuration. So we'll start from middleware, FreeRTOS, interface cmc's underscore v2 and uh, within this we need to configure two tasks so i go to tasks and queues i would rename this default task by double click on its name and i would uh, change it to task one priority normal i would keep the same uh, 256 words as a stack size and uh, start task one as a entry function. Then coming back to tasks and queues, I would add one more task. So uh, the second task would be named uh, task two. The same priority, uh, normal 256 words and start task two as uh, entry function name. That's it. So we've got two tasks and now we need to create uh, one semaphore. For this, uh, I would go to the next tab, which is timers and semaphores, and uh, within binary semaphores, I would click on it. I would keep uh, the default name, my binary sem01, and that's it. So we've got uh, the binary semaphore. The last thing we need to, to check is uh, to check whether our external interrupt 13, which is uh, supporting our blue button, is already enabled. So for this I can go either to system view or I can go within system core and VIC configuration. And uh, within this I can see XT line 15 to 10, 10 to 15 in fact, are gathered together and it's not enabled so I enable it. And then there is an important point in front of us. In the current version of Cube IDE, there is no automatic preemption priority assignment to the interrupts. And uh, we need to correct it. We need to, uh, let's say, fine tune it. We would like to use this interrupt to handle, to execute the operating system functions. In this case, it is important that none of those functions would be executed uh, once uh, 
we are in a critical section in the operating system. The critical sections in uh, FreeRT OS are used very often. Always, if you perform any operation on the tasks, its priorities, uh, semaphore queues, or any other uh, OS components. So it is important that during, uh, let's say, the phase of critical section, none of other operating system functions should be executed. So. To do this, uh, we are specifying some, let's say, borders within our priorities of the interrupts, and uh, we can select some of the interrupts which would execute, let's say, operating system functions, and the rest will not. Uh, this boundary is specified within FreeRTS configuration. This is why I'm coming back to FreeRTS, and within config parameters tab, I scroll down, and uh, I'm looking for this library max syscall interrupt priority. This is specified to 5. It means that all the priorities from 5 till 15 can execute operating system functions without any issues. All interrupts from 0 to 4, so with higher priority than 5, should not do it because it might cause uh, the system crash. This is why the priority preemption priority of our external interrupt should be numerically higher or the same than 5. So I come back to NVIC and I specify my preemption priority for this interrupt to level 5. And uh, this was the last step within this uh, configurator, so I can generate the code. OK, code is generated. I can open main.c file. If not displayed automatically, I can go to core source and click double click on this main.c file. Now we'll perform some uh, operations on the code. Let's continue with code modifications. So we are within the main.c file. If I would scroll down, I can see the definition of my objects of the operating system. So both tasks, priority normal, the stack size 256 words. This is why it multiplied by four. And I can see the definition of my uh, semaphore. So within the definition of the semaphore, there is only the name. There are uh, more uh, fields within the attributes of uh, this component. And those are, for example, the pointer to the semaphore control block. This field is um, it's assigned during the creation of the semaphore, which is a bit below after the initialization of the kernel. So we can see here the uh, semaphore uh, creation. Uh, what is important is that uh, we can specify within this function what would be the initial state of the semaphore. Please have a look that we've got uh, three arguments here. Uh, let me display the, the function. Uh, it's enough to click on it and wait a bit. You can see more information after. So please have a look that the first argument is a max count, so the maximum number of available tokens. This function is common to binary and counting semaphores, so in the next exercise where we will use the counting semaphores, we will have a different number here. For binary semaphores, uh, we need one. Then the next argument, the second one, is a very important one because this is the initial count, so the initial number of available tokens. If you would like to have the semaphore already available upon its creation, we can keep one at the beginning. But usually it is not the case. Usually we would like to start as, uh, an application with uh, semaphores not, uh, let's say, available. And we would like to make them available uh, after. This is why I would uh, change it to zero. The third argument is, uh, let's say, the address of the structure which contains the attributes. In this case, from our side, we specified only the name of the semaphore, but as I told you, within this structure, we have a bit more information, especially the pointers to the memory where the semaphore data are kept. After this, we can see the creation of both tasks and start of the kernel. Now it is time for our coding. Let me start uh, with um, the universal function which we are using to uh, make a so-called sign of life uh, of our components. Uh, so I would first implement the task action function. It is uh, returning nothing, task underscore action, and it is accepting one uh, component, which is char, and then it is sending this char over uh, ITM interface and then I'm sending 
the sign of new uh, line just to keep everything in separate lines. So this is it. Then I need to put it into the private function definitions, prototypes over here before main, and we can come back to our tasks. Okay, we will start with the implementation of our tasks. So the first would be task one function body. By default, there is a, only the delay of one millisecond. Uh, OS delay means that we will send the task to blocked state. So we will replace it into, let's say, a bit longer delay. Let me say 2000 milliseconds, so two seconds. Then we will, uh, let's say, send some sign of life. Task action one. And uh, after, we will try to release the semaphore. Task 1 will release the semaphore and task 2 will wait for it. And uh, please notice one important point. Once we release the semaphore, uh, we do not specify any timeout. So we try to release it. If it's not possible, the function will return, let's say, the error value, the negative value, and we continue execution. It is um, different than uh, we have observed within, for example, queues where we specified the timeout in both cases while we put some data to the queue or we were waiting for data from the queue. This is the important difference. Okay, uh, so we would like, uh, let's say, to give the semaphore once per two seconds. Uh, then within our second task, we would like to get this semaphore. Semaphore, and now there is a not get, but acquire semaphore. This is this is the semaphore. I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Here is the handler and the timeout. In this case, once we are waiting for the semaphore, we can specify the timeout. So if we get the semaphore within this timeout or it will, it will pass with negative value as a return value, if we will not be successful within these four seconds. It would be better if we monitor the return value, but for this simple exercise and uh, quite deterministic timing, I'm pretty sure that we will, it, it will be enough time to, to get the semaphore. As you can see that uh, even if we do not do anything, a semaphore would be released uh, twice uh, during the timeout of um, task two action. Okay, so after this, uh, we will just uh, pass the sign of life again. So this it is task number two. I would use two. There is no OS delay. Our OS delay is in fact this uh, acquiring of the semaphore. Next point, which we would like to add here, is a second source of uh, releasing the semaphore. Because the semaphore can be released as well from the interrupt. As we have enabled uh, interrupt from our blue button, which is connected to pin PC13, we can use this opportunity to release the semaphore from this interrupt callback as well. How to specify the callback? If we go to the interrupt file, which is in our case stm32l4xx-it.c file, and we scroll down to the interrupt of external uh, interrupts, I can go to the definition of this of this function and I can see that there is a callback which is called after flag clearance. So as it is defined as weak, I can copy the definition and I can reuse exactly the same function on my site. So I come back to my main.c file and after my task action, I would define the same function and then the callback. And within the callback, I will send Let's say my sign of life. In this case, I will send an exclamation mark and I would release the semaphore. Okay. After this, we can compile the code and check whether it is working as expected. So I'm compiling the code. Okay, no errors, no warnings. Okay, so we can start a debug session. So click this bug icon. My board is already connected. Let's check whether a single wire viewer is enabled. If not, 
I need to specify 4 MHz as it is our system clock. And I press OK. Then I need to enable SWV ITM data console. If you do not have this tab, uh, please uh, use this quick access and uh, put here SWV and select this monitor icon. Okay, as I've got it, I will not do it with you. Then the configuration. Uh, we need to use this configure trace button and enable channel zero, let's say ITM stimulus port zero, which is SWO. Done and start, let's say the tracing with this icon. After this, we can start an application. So I resume it and I can see, you remember, there is a quite long delay, two seconds for task one. I can see task one, task two, one by one. If I press the button, you can see exc exclamation mark as well. I can pause it and uh, please have a look. At the beginning, I was not, let's say, pressing the button. So task two was the task who was wa which was waiting, in fact, uh, for the semaphore. Let me come back to the code. Uh, so it is waiting for the semaphore. Uh, so we can see as a first executed task one because task two was blocked on this line. So task one was the first one. And uh, let's say the first occurrence uh, was visible after two seconds. So then there was a sign of line from task one, a releasing of the semaphore and after task 2 was unable to reach this uh, value and give its own task as a sign of life. And it was uh, coming one by one, as you can see, till the moment I press the button. If I press the button, the semaphore has been given. So this is pressing of the button. Semaphore was released and it allows uh, task 2 to be executed immediately. This is why we can see just after, let's say, the task 2 execution. And then again, it was uh, task 1 task 2. And again, it was an interrupt. So just after um, was, uh, let's say, task 2 executed as it is waiting all the time. In fact, it is waiting all the time for the data. It is blocked only by this function. So if we would provide to this task uh, the semaphore frequently, we can see, for example, only exclamation uh, mark and 2, as you can see in this, in this sequence. 2 exclamation mark 2 exclamation mark 2. As you can see, because task one was blocked by this OS delay, so it was not operational for two seconds. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching it.